Yay! Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. I'm really excited about this video because voltage and current are often these elusive concepts. Circuits kind of seem like magic sometimes, even though I've been working with electronics for a long time and I studied physics. So theoretically, I should know what is happening, but I had a few really cool revelations when I was researching this video, and so I am very excited to share my findings with you and hopefully bring you along in my learning journey. Um, okay, so what are we looking at today? So we just covered Ohm's Law, and now we're talking about what happens when we have moving charges or when we have current flowing through wires. We are going to look at what the electromotive force is, or the oomph. <laughs> so, oomph in your circuit. Um, what is it? Where does it come from? And why should we care? We're also in our exploration of oomph. I'm just probably going to keep saying that because it delights me. Um, we are going to learn more about what voltage actually is and some of these really strange things about current. For example, is it actually true that the current flowing throughout your circuit is the same? That seems a little wild. Okay, can we assume that to be true? Um, also, what is doing the pushing? That's kind of strange. Are the charges all like hustly bustly and elbowing each other through? Um, what's happening? How are they pushing each other? Or who, what's doing the pushing? Um, and we have one more question that I forgot. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, oh yeah, okay. So um you can actually calculate the speed at which each individual charge is moving through your circuit if you really care about that there are example problems i kind of skipped that section but basically charges in a circuit really aren't moving that fast so when we turn on a light switch why does the light turn on basically instantaneously the charges that are closest to our light source are not the charges that made the way made their way to the light. So what the heck is going on? <gasps> wow. Okay. So let's back up and draw some pictures. Yeah. All right. So let's assume that current is not the same as it's flowing throughout our circuit. Let's say we have a bend in our circuit and we get a little charge traffic jam. Um, so we have current flowing in and current flowing out, and we get some buildup of charges. Um, I'm gonna draw like my book. Um, so that the current flowing in is greater than the current flowing out, like a so. And just to make it, well, okay, yeah. So remember, each individual charge exerts a force, an electrostatic force, on the other charges around it. It starts at a positive charge and um, points radially outward. So for these charges, um, the electrostatic force is going to point this way. And same for these over here. These ones are going to point this way. But we're going to assume that we have more charges kind of at this beginning point. I probably should. They're going to flow on the outside of the wire, but just pretend we have kind of more over here. Um, it's hard to draw. So what's going to end up happening is that we have an accumulation of charges that have an electrostatic force that opposes this current flow, and that causes the incoming charges to slow down. And because um, the E field is actually causing Oh, wait, let me back up. Okay, so the direction of the E field is going to push the other charges on this side, the ones that are less backed up, and so it's going to speed up the current flowing out until we reach an equilibrium. Dun da da! Yay! So basically, there's a traffic jam. The electrostatic force builds up, it opposes the flow, the current flow coming in, and it enhances the flow of the charges going out until you reach an equilibrium. And this will continue to happen. Um, this happens so quickly that we can assume that it's instantaneous. Super cool, right? Yeah, I love it. Okay, 
Um, okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> Check my notes. What does this mean? Why should we care? Well, basically what this tells us is that there are actually two forces at work in our circuit. Ooh, fun! So the we have the force that's causing the current to flow in. We'll call that the force of our source. Tee source force. Rhymes. It's very satisfying to say. Kind of like oomph. And then we have the electrostatic force, which is a result of the charges, well, just being charges and having an electrostatic field. And so uh, the net effect is that we have this total force in our circuit, which we can represent by the force of our source, plus this electrostatic force. And if we want to add it up, um, we can take the line integral around our circuit for example, if I were to draw a representative circuit with a giant 9 volt battery um, and a little light bulb, bloop, that's a funny light bulb, but that's okay. Um, so we connect it here and then we connect it to the bottom because that's often how it goes. Um, so we have this pushing force from our source and then we have our charges throughout our circuit um, that have an electrostatic force. So if we sum up over the closed path of our circuit, um, we are going to get a definition for the EMF. Uh, I don't know where to draw this. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're just going to draw it here. Okay, so we're going to define uh, the EMF. The <laughs> this is still fun as the closed line integral of this total um, force, this one right here throughout the path integral, but we can simplify that to just the force of our source because um, if you remember from electrostatics, hey, building on our previous knowledge, the closed loop integral of an electrostatic force around a, a path is zero. Boom. So that goes away. Um, and that's what we're left with. And so this is the definition for electromotive force or EMF. Um, note that it is not actually a force in the traditional Newtonian sense. Um, it's actually the integral of the force per unit charge. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So what does this mean? How do we get information about voltage coming out of this? Well, let's assume that we have an ideal battery that does not have any internal resistance. I'm going to leave this here for now and maybe I will box it because that's a fun little definition. Um, but if we have a battery with no internal resistance, <coughs> real batteries do, <coughs> it's okay, we can assume that it doesn't for now, um, then we can ask um, what, is, uh, what is the potential between the terminals? Okay. So um, the net force on the charges is zero. Um, so the first thing I guess I should, should write is that the electrostatic force is equal and opposite um, because you know if you have your net force equals zero and that equals F S plus B, um, you just solve. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So then the definition for the voltage is uh, the negative uh, line integral of A to B of our electric field. Um, and uh, da, 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 then we plug in uh, the negative source force. <laughs> the negatives cancel. We still go from A to B. Fs dot, there's a dot there, dot DL, and that's a vector. Um, and since our circuit is a closed loop, we can basically point A is the same as point B. So we're going around a closed loop. Um, Fs dot DL. Hey, wait a second. That's a really intense vector sign. Um, okay. Wait a second. This oh, colors. I'm gonna use colors. Okay. This <laughs> is the same as this. <gasps> what? That's wild. Okay. Put down my paper with a plum. Okay, so this says that the voltage for an ideal battery um, is the same as the EMF. Um, so let me make sure I 
I always have to be very careful. In physics, small words can mean a lot. Um, so the battery establishes and maintains a voltage difference equal to the electromotive force. The resulting electrostatic field from the individual charges drives the current around the rest of the circuit. Um, quick note, but inside the battery, um, the source force is driving the current equal and opposite to E, so you have back flow of charges, which is why your battery degrades, or if you have a rechargeable battery, you, the charges kind of, they get pushed over here and then you have to recharge it. Um, da -da 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 -da. So, um, we can interpret the electromotive force as the work done per unit charge by the source. So voltage is basically how much work uh, that source is doing on each charge. And finally, I just want to kind of summarize why this is super cool. So this tells us that before we connect up our circuit or before we turn it on, we have these charges that have an electrostatic force and they're hanging out in equilibrium, more or less. When we turn on our battery, the battery exerts the source force on the first charge. So I'll zoom in. So here is my lethal charge. We have F of S, and then this pushes a force on the next one and so on and so on. But the charge that gets pushed by the battery is not the charge that's gonna light up our light. The charge that lights up our light is the, or charges, are the ones that are closest to the battery. They're hanging out here. It's this chain reaction of um, the electrostatic force being pushed by the source force that actually turns on the light instantaneously. That is super cool. So it's this kind of, it's this electrostatic field that moves the current through the circuit at the speed of light. The charges themselves actually don't move that fast. Okay, so that blows my mind. Um, that was something that I actually didn't fully understand or grasp until I was like digging into the content for this video. So this is why I love teaching is because I get to learn stuff too. And then I get to share how cool it is with other people. Yay. Okay. So I hope that you found this as interesting as I did. Please let me know if you have any questions about this content. Um, and otherwise I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. And yes, I will see you next time. I hope. Bye.